Uh, okay, so hello, uh, I'm Wendy from Red Hat, uh, the Anaconda Instar team, and today I would like to talk about uh, customizing the system Instar. Uh, I'm one of the developers and maintainers of uh, installer for Fedora, RL, and other distributions. <coughs> um, so, uh, how can we customize the system installer? Uh, so, basically, we have one application, but it looks a little different on every distribution. Uh, for example, this is Fedora Silverblue. Uh, Silverblue and Workstation is are trying to uh, provide very minimal um, user interface. Uh, because they are installing a Gnome initial setup, so a lot of configuration happens after the first reboot when you can set up your user account and stuff like that. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to <coughs> uh, show it during the installation as well. Uh, Fedora server doesn't have this option because it doesn't uh, necessarily install a graphical system, so all configuration happens during the installation, so there are some additional screens. Uh, then the CentOS stream, uh, it shows uh, all available add-ons that we kind of have at this moment. Uh, and the uh, RHEL, uh, they have additional support, uh, we have additional support for Red Hat subscriptions. Uh, so that's another screen. Um, yeah, okay, so what are the most common customizations that are asked by uh, users? Um, so one of them is very obvious, it's branding. Uh, people want to change colors and add the um, ch ch change the background of the um, left bar and upper bar and add a logo and some names. Uh, the other thing, uh, customize defaults. Uh, so when we have some UI elements in the code, you want to oops, sorry. Uh, we want to um, yeah you, you want to control what's going to be displayed there by default because in the ideal case um, you, you don't want users to click on it, and in the ideal case, they would just be happy with the defaults and like continue with what they need to do. Uh, but uh, different distributions have different expectations and policy and directions and group of users, so they don't agree on these values. So you need to find a way how to uh, customize it as well. Uh, as I already mentioned, uh, Silverblue and Workstation uh, are showing very minimal amount of screens. Uh, so we support uh, like hiding these screens based on their names. Uh, so um, distributions can have like full um, control over what's going to be displayed to the user. Uh, and there is a little more advanced thing, um, and it's limiting uh, the functionality. Uh, this is uh, a little different than hiding the screen because hiding the screen will just hide the UI elements. Uh, while when you want to limit the functionality, it will also disable some parts of the installer, so like Anaconda will not touch these areas at all and will completely ignore it. Uh, where it is used the most is the uh, support for the uh, Red Hat subscriptions, uh, because this is uh, disabled in other distributions and we just don't want Anaconda even look in that direction, uh, so it's uh, disabled for uh, these distributions. Uh, so how these uh, things are actually configured. Uh, we use something we call Anaconda configuration files. It's not very surprising. It's just a very simple file in the ini format. We have some sections, some options, some comments. Um, even though it's not surprising, uh, we didn't have anything like this until like a few years ago, and it was very painful. So this is basically the reason why I'm giving this um, presentation. Uh, because the customizations are not new. What's new is how you can uh, do, do, do them and uh, how the code is working with them. Uh, so we uh, basically use the same format, uh, but we use them in a, four different ways. Uh, so we have something like four types of configuration files. Uh, the first one is the default configuration file, and that's uh, just a fully defined configuration that's just like this base layer. And it contains uh, like every um, every defaults that normally would be in the code because we had like a lot of hard coded fallbacks like if this is not set and this is not set then use just this one, and since it was hard coded it was very hard to change it or find it why it doesn't work, uh, so now it's there and we just use it as a fallback here, uh, and we could uh, remove these these fallbacks from the code which is great. Uh, the other area are profiles. Profiles are basically like named configurations that can be used for specific um, distributions. 
Uh, I will get to that later. Uh, then we support something like custom configuration files. Uh, there is just a drop there and you can like put there anything you want to change and we will automatically load it and apply it um, and you don't have to care about anything else. And the last one is the runtime configuration file. This is file that we generate. Um, I will get to that later as well. So what are the Anaconda profiles? Um, so as I said, um, different distributions have a little different configurations and we, do, we need to somehow keep them in our code base or um, packages and we need to decide uh, when we want to use which profile and it needs to be very deterministic. You don't want to, I don't know, start with a workstation but show something very different because people are confused and report bugs and you don't want that. Um, so this is basically the reason why we started to look into the Anaconda configuration files, because before that we had something like this. Uh, it's called Anaconda install class, and it's just, yeah, it's a Python code, it's just class, which is based on another confusing class, and there's some logic for, uh, for uh, like deciding if the class should be used, and there are some, uh, options that you can like change and set and there are some functions like this could easily this could very easily broke and it happened several times because it's python code so there's usually like a bunch of imports on the top of that and when we move to function somewhere it broke like all these classes and the bad part was that these classes were not even in our code base uh, they were installed by some third party uh, packages and sometimes we had even <laughs> a hard time to find which packages uh, provided these classes. Uh, so yeah, this was like a nightmare for developers. Uh, so what we did instead uh, was to introduce the configuration files and create something like a profile. Uh, the profile is basically, the format is same as we saw before. Uh, there are just two additional um, sections. Uh, the first one, the profile, defines the profile. Every profile has a unique ID and it can uh, say that it's based on another profile. And what's cool about this uh, is that uh, very often we have like these families of distributions like Fedora, Fedora Server and Fedora Workstation. They share a lot of configuration. And we didn't want to like duplicate the code and like create new configuration every time because it would be very, very difficult to like keep track what's changing and if the configuration is really correct. Uh, so basically we introduced something like a simple inheritance and um, you can just say, okay, use everything that this Fedora profile is using, but I want to change some additional stuff. Uh, and it's working pretty great. Uh, the other section uh, that support for uh, automated profile detection. Uh, so basically, um, Anaconda can choose a profile in two different ways. Uh, the most straightforward one is that you just specify use a profile, you provide the profile ID, Anaconda will find the correct file and do everything. Uh, what's used most, um, what's more common uh, is that you don't define the profile at all and Anaconda chooses it based on OS release values of the installation environment. Uh, and there are some um, options with some values and we just match them against them. So like if the OS release value file, OS release file contains uh, this OS ID and variant ID, then we will say, okay, this is the profile that should be used and use it. Um, this looks also very obvious, but before that it was really complicated and we had a lot of bugs when just some install classes jumped in the priority and were used when they couldn't. Uh, so simplifying it uh, solved a lot of our issues. So, uh, so the benefits of the profiles, I already mentioned some. Uh, yeah, the Python code, it was just horrible. Please don't ever do it. Like if you have this option, just say no. Um, the fact that we support only single inheritance, I also see it as a benefit because multiple inheritance it's, it's cool, it's just, it's sometimes a little unpredictable and hard to understand. Uh, people were actually asking for support uh, for multiple inheritance with the configuration file, we said no. Um, then, yeah, we definitely simplified the product detection. It's like, it's very primitive, but it's working and we don't have any issues with that. Uh, and one of the biggest benefits is that with the install classes, uh, so we, we like created this object 
and we had to like drag it everywhere in the code. And every time we had UI element and we wanted to decide what's going to be like be there by default, it was really horrible because we had like four different sources that could provide us this information and we had to check all of them. So it was like, did the user set it up? Was it set it, set it up in the Kistar file? Is it set in the install classes? And if no, use this hard-coded default. Um, so yeah, every time you wanted to touch it, you had to like test all of these cases because it's like four different branches. So yeah, that wasn't fun. Uh, what's great about profiles is that they are just very natural part of uh, Anaconda configuration uh, because they are just merged into this one configuration that we use uh, when, while Anaconda is running. Uh, and it's called runtime configuration. So let's look at it. Uh, runtime configuration is basically just fully defined configuration of the, of the actual run. So we just merge all the sources into one file. <coughs> we generate this file and everything that we run after that is using just this like a temporary uh, file. And that's it. And what's great is that everything that we run after we generate this file, it doesn't have to care about profiles or just some customization or stuff like that. It just uses this one file and it just has everything in it. So uh, how is it actually created? Uh, we basically parse and merge uh, a lot of configuration files. So we start with the default configuration because it's, uh, it's the base layer. Uh, then we select the profile and uh, read everything that's related to that. Uh, then we load the custom customizations. Uh, then we actually change some uh, options and sections based on the kernel arguments and command line options. That's also great because we don't have to deal with that later. And then we have this one actual configuration uh, in the parser and we just generate it into a file uh, and that's it. Uh, and what happens next? Uh, after that, we start something we call uh, the dbus modules. Uh, and basically, Anaconda is no longer just one process. It runs multiple processes, and each process has a different <coughs> um, meaning or area. Uh, it cares about like the storage network. Uh, and when this uh, process is started, the first thing it's looking for is this runtime configuration. <coughs> uh, so like these processes, all, all, everything that we start in Anaconda has access to the same configuration, and it's it's uh, it's really great because we we don't have to care about a lot of stuff. <coughs> uh, we can just initialize <coughs> uh, initialize everything uh, as we as we import it and as we create these services. <coughs> um, yeah, so this is really cool. Uh, so the main benefits. <coughs> uh, I guess the biggest one is that we have just this single source of default values. We no longer have like these uh, horrible branches, <coughs> horrible branches when we uh, have to check all these values and everything, and we just ask this one thing, and everything else was already resolved. So this is great. <coughs> uh, it's also much more deterministic. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, the other thing, uh, yeah, this, this file should be like constant, like once we generate it, <coughs> it shouldn't be, can you open it please? <laughs> uh, once it generated, uh, it shouldn't change. <coughs> uh, that's basically by design because we don't want to check this later. <coughs> okay. yeah, thank you so much. Uh, because you don't want to like check this later and like update these values somewhere because we, we no longer remember that these were some defaults. Uh, so the file should be constant and it's removed after Anaconda is finished. <coughs> uh, yeah, and the biggest selling point is that it's accessible from everywhere pretty much. Uh, so <coughs> here are <coughs> So here are some examples from the beginning of the installation, uh, presentation, sorry. <laughs> Too much installations. Um, and how can you actually do them? <coughs> so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the branding, <coughs> with the branding, you can just uh, provide your own uh, CSS file uh, and change anything you want, basically. So the images are in these files. 
uh, and the custom style sheet is just hmm, loaded based on like on top of our style sheet. <coughs> The customized defaults. <coughs> so since uh, it's very easy for developers to use these uh, options and defaults, it's just everywhere in the code. So <coughs> you can very easily like change something and it will have like impact everywhere. So like the default scheme is used also for auto partitioning um, <coughs> uh, in the UI. Um, yeah, it's very easy to change the default right now. Uh, then the hidden screens. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, then the hidden screens. <coughs> uh, you can just specify a, a screen by its class name. Uh, we are going to change it to uh, screen IDs uh, to make it usable in the new UI. Uh, but the principle is pretty much same. You just we just ignore anything that's mentioned here. <coughs> uh, and then you can like disable any of the Anaconda modules. Um, it's not any. We don't support all of them at this moment. But you can you can disable most of them, <coughs> and the most common example is with the subscription when you can just say ana tell Anaconda to never like touch this area and don't use this module, and this code will never be uh, started or run or accessible, <coughs> which is great. Uh, so I made it. <laughs> uh, does anyone has any questions? <coughs> uh, yeah, and there are some additional informations if you want to. No. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, the question was <coughs> uh, the question was if the configuration can be defined in Kickstart. <coughs> we'll have to wait. <laughs> um, so, um, I think no, because it's just we need this information very early, and. Parsing Kickstarter file is not like trivial operation, <coughs> and we already have to need a lot of stuff set up, and we need to configuration early. So I think the only way how to get it to the system is is with an update image, yeah, or or install it like via package <coughs> when you create the boot Yeah, so it looks like this is it. Thank you so much. <coughs> yeah. <I'm sorry. coughs> Uh, so these profiles are actually in our code base and we install all of them. So they are on the system <coughs> and I mentioned that we detect like what kind of system we are running on and based on that we choose the profile. <coughs> but the current policy is actually that we have a lot of profiles or some obscure distributions because why, why not? So that you can find them actually yeah, in the profile D, there are a lot of them. Yeah, it's, it's both. Uh, we have a boot option where you can specify the profile ID and it will just force this profile to be used. <coughs> uh, but uh, usually it's auto-detected and we look at the its OS release file and it just describes the installation environment. And the practice is that the installation environment is basically what you are currently installing. It's complicated. Um, so it's it's enough. So we are able to like detect what kind of system it should be and choose the profile based on that. Yeah, definitely. It's already injectable. You can use all your profile. Or if you just don't care about profiles and want to just change something, you can use the custom configuration files because it's just a drop directory and it's merged like it's the last thing that we load, so it will overwrite anything else you can. So it's it's very easy to like play with. But yeah, it's it's installer, so <laughs> installer is not very <coughs> fun to develop, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's very easy to change the configuration. Yeah. Uh, any more questions? Uh, 
Wow, that's a complex question. I guess write us an email and we will <laughs> try to direct you to the right people. <coughs> uh, I guess what you want it like it. W Yeah, okay. Oh, sorry, I will not repeat the question. It's just complicated. Um, we, we have a discussion section on, on GitHub, so maybe just trace your questions there and we will, we will help you. It's just because when you create these ISOs, it's not just Anaconda, it involves other like projects and it's, it's a lot of to handle, so. <coughs> Yeah, maybe let's move to the hall so we can like clear the space for the other person. Yeah, so thank you very much and see you next time. <laughs>